This is not just an upmarket sedan, it's a personality test of sorts. Some buyers need a badge with gravitas, for others it's about bang for the buck. No need for a Myers-Briggs assessment to understand Cadenza has style, comfort, and tech. Pragmatic folks won't mind the Kia emblem. Status seekers? Well, there's always therapy. Sedans like Cadenza, Toyota Avalon, and Hyundai Azera are sort of unique in the automotive world in that they're near luxury cars sold by mainstream brands. Let's throw Nissan Maxima and maybe Chevy Impala in as well. The second generation Cadenza is a solid improvement over the first. Drawn up in Kia's California studio, the premium vibe of the sheet metal looks like Volvo's new S90 at first glance. And second, seems like Zorro was on the design team. The adaptive cruise control sensor could be subtler though. Price? Well, it starts at around $33,000. This limited model with all the trimmings retails for just over forty-five dollars That is a serious deal. Cadenza remains front-wheel drive with V6 power at 3.3 liters. There's 290 horsepower and 253 pound-feet of torque from the revised engine. The transmission now sports eight speeds, and the shifter is very straightforward. Thanks, Kia. Drive modes alter shift dynamics, steering weight, and throttle response, but not suspension firmness. Cadenza has solid acceleration. Type A personalities should be satisfied with zero to 60 runs just under seven seconds. The V6 is refined, but it's not super buttery smooth like the engines found in true luxury brands. Uh, just remember the price. Though the structure is lighter, Cadenza's torsional rigidity is up by 35%. The buttoned down suspension is more sophisticated front and rear. Expect coddling, not sport dynamics. My biggest gripe with Kias in the past has been no road feel whatsoever. Engineers have finally dialed some in. The ride quality is what you'd expect from a car in this class. Comfortable, but controlled. Cadenza doesn't ooze character, but it sure is quiet. The EPA average fuel economy rating of 23 miles per gallon is competitive in class. One thing not available on Cadenza that could be really useful, all-wheel drive. This top-tier limited model is stuffed with standard tech like blind spot warning, lane keep assist, cross path detection, plus auto braking with pedestrian detection. Like the exterior, the cockpit has a spendy look to it. This is not the cheap leather. Seats are climate controlled. The driver's chair is especially adjustable. The Harman Kardon system makes even grainy Sirius XM stations sound good. Trim is simulated bark, but it looks expensive, as do all the materials here. Wonder how the piano black pieces will look in a few years, though. The interface is easy to use, no owner's manual necessary, just the right amount of hard buttons, too. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are here, plus it would be hard to back into anything considering the cameras. I am five foot nine with this adjusted for a driver my size. I have an awful lot of room back here. Kia claims Cadenza's interior is the most spacious of all the main competitors, and not all of them offer this impressive piece of glass. Button warmers? Yep. Sunshades? Check. One in back, too. There are power jacks to charge phones and computers, but those wanting control don't get a rear climate zone. Kia is big on auto opening trunks, the kind where you stand next to it with the transponder key in your pocket or purse. Boom, very handy. Less handy, there's only a ski pass through, seat backs don't fold down. Good thing the nicely trimmed cargo hold is on the spacious side, swallowing up seven packs of my trunk measurement metric. Not only does Cadenza do a good job slugging it out with cars I mentioned earlier, it can hold its own against sedans like Buick LaCrosse, Lincoln MKZ, and Lexus ES. In addition to style, features, and value, Kia offers a 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. If your personality type is content without a premium badge, Cadenza competes comfortably in the near-luxury segment.